to Everyday Cooking with Anne. You know, it's the middle of the winter and comfort food just is king in the middle of the winter. And we are having, uh, actually I'm making this roast for my daughter whose birthday and her, her favorite food in the world is like steak and potatoes. So I'm making a pot roast with mashed potatoes and um, carrots and beans and all kinds of fun things. But I'm showing you today this wonderful pot roast. It's called a Mississippi pot roast. And honestly, of all the pot roasts I've ever made, this is the most flavorful and easiest to make. And hands down, it's a company favorite. If you want to, if you're having company for dinner, this will do the trick. This will help them remember you forever because it's so, so delicious. And so let me get started first by showing you all the ingredients we're going to put in here so you can have it all ready ahead of time like I do before you get started. I've got some avocado oil because I'm trying to use a healthier oil now. And what I love about an avocado oil is that it has a very high uh, temperature of 500 degrees that you can sear or put into any dish and it's not going to smoke or anything like that. So it's a really good oil for that and it's a healthy oil as well. Okay, some of the seasonings we're gonna put in here is um, ranch dressing. You can buy one packet of ranch dressing for this roast or you can just put in two or three tablespoons of this ranch seasoning I buy in bulk. Uh, this is one of the most important ingredients, the au jus gravy. You have to have au jus gravy, it's so good. Now, the uh, other ingredients are a little bit of brown sugar. I have about a couple of tablespoons of that. I also have this really great product. If you don't have beef stock in your pantry, in, in, the can, in the packaging, you can use this better than bouillon beef stock. And I'll show you what I'm doing with this. I'm actually getting a, two, a quart of uh, water on my stove over here. I'll show you in a few minutes putting some of this in and how much we put in for that. Okay, and then the secret ingredient, oh, besides uh, I put lots of garlic in. I probably, it calls for two tablespoons. You can use the bottled minced, but I like the chopped fresh garlic, whatever you, pre you prefer. And the secret ingredient, I'm not going to tell my daughter this, she would never eat one of these peppers in a million years. But the thing is, this pepperoncini makes this whole pot roast just amazing. You pour some juice in and uh, you put some pepperoncini in and it does, you won't taste anything hot when you're finished. You won't even know that you have anything spicy or hot in there. It just provides amazing flavor, which is what we're looking for. This is why we have these other dressings and other things going in this pot roast. To get started, I've heat, I'm heating up my um, pan here. And I'm just putting like maybe a tablespoon of um, the um, avocado oil to heat up. My pan's already pretty hot right now. And let me just show you real quick. Uh, I love this because it's ceramic. It's really heavy. If not, a Magnolite roaster would work really well too. But you want to have a really good pot unless you want to try the crock pot way, which I'll talk about to you uh, later on. Okay, here is my roast. You want a three, uh, four to five pound roast, I oh, three to four pound roast, and that's what this, this is ac exactly three and a half pounds of roast. I'm gonna take it out of the packaging right now. And I'm gonna drain off really quickly, hold on, and then I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, I just, Put a little bit of the juices in the sink and then I'm going to take this roast and I'm going to get some paper towels and you want to um, make this as um, you want to get this roast so that it is completely dry before we sear it so I'm going to just take this part right here and then do it there we go it'll be a couple different pieces and you can break this in half too so that it's so it's a bit, little bit easier to sear which is what I'm going to do right now is cut this down a little bit. You could put this into chunks and you'll be fine. Or you can leave it whole. Okay. But the main thing right now is that we are going to dry this up as best we can with some paper towels on both sides. You want to leave the fat on there because it's going to be what flavors this roast. Getting pretty hot now. I'm turning it down to medium. And I'm going to take my... You don't want any seasonings on here yet, but I'm going to put this in right here. Now what you need to know is you don't want to, it, it's going to stick here in just a minute. So as soon as it's actually seared, the sticking will come off. It will it'll slide around. So if it's still sticky, it means it's not quite seared. And we're going to take it and sear it on all sides. I'm going to put another one in here too right now.
You can hear that sizzling. I have it on fire and I've got it down to medium right now. This will take maybe four or five minutes to sear on the whole side. Okay, I have um, four cups of water here to make your stock or your bouillon and this calls for um, one and a half tablespoons of this very concentrated beef stock for a quart of water, a quart of stock. So this is a great thing to have around the house when you don't have stock on hand. Same with chicken bouillon. So once that's all dissolved, we'll be ready to go in. Okay, we're checking our roast now. This is browning so lovely and it's coming up just great, but you can see how it looks. And what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and brown it on the sides as well before I turn it over and do the back side. This other piece is going on as well. Perfectly beautifully brown. You want it to have a caramel color. Okay, I've been doing the side of this roast as well. Now I'm going to put it right on the back side for another couple of minutes. So I'm doing four different sides, both sides and the front and back. This other piece I'm turning over now a little bit to do this one side. You can see that I have seared all the different sides of this meat. That's going to caramelize the meat and the sauce as well, and it's just going to make a better tasting roast when you sear it. It always, always does. I've got this on about medium, and I, as you can see in here, I still have quite a bit of oil that I use right here, so I don't need to add any more, but sometimes you do need to add a little bit more to do your onions. So I've got it down around medium right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in I slice my onion in half and then I make little slices on it because I like kind of bigger chunks of onion. But if you want, you can chop your onion, but onion definitely is, has to be in this roast. It really, really does. So you're going to put a whole onion, kind of a, one of those nice large sweet onions, white onions are really, really good, or white onions you can use. But I'm putting this all in here. And I'm going to saute this around. it needs a little more oil, I'll add a little bit, but you want to do this and kind of start getting the pieces of the roast that was sticking to the bottom there mixed in with the onion. Oh, that smells good. We're going to let this saute for a little bit before we add our garlic because we don't want our garlic to burn. We only want to just let it go for possibly 30 seconds before we add the other ingredients. Sauteing these right here, take up the, cleans up the bowl, the bottom of the pot a little bit. So it incorporates the, the uh, beef flavor into the onions. Of course, you're gonna have a lot of beef flavor here too because you've got this beef stock bouillon that we're going to add as well. You want those nicely sauteed, not overdone because they're going to be baking in the oven as well. But we wanted to get all those nice big bits out of the bottom here and into the onions. Okay, I'm going to add my garlic now. I have a, quite a bit of garlic. Um, it's usually about two tablespoons of minced garlic. I have chopped garlic because I like bigger pieces. So I'm going to saute that in here now as well with the onions. So good. <laughs> I promise you this roast is going to be very memorable. If you haven't tried it yet already, this is really amazing. Okay, it looks like our garlic's melted nicely with our onions. And now we're going to add um, our other ingredients. So we're going to be adding about two or three tablespoons of ranch dressing. I think two will be enough. That's probably about what about two and a half is what's in a packet. 
we're going to add our raw juice gravy. Now, if you have a bigger roast, like if you have something between four and six or eight pounds of roast you're doing, you need to double the size of these. You need to double the amount of the seasonings that go in. Okay, I'm going to also add some brown sugar here. I'm going to just move this around a little bit to saute in with the carrot or with the onions and garlic. And I'm going to add now our beef broth into our onions. Mm. So fabulous. Okay, now our secret ingredient. You want to pour maybe a fourth a cup, maybe up to a half a cup of this juice in here, depending on how much you have. I have quite a large thing of peppers. Now, I have my oven preheated to 425, and let me just tell you a little bit about this before I finish up. Uh, you can make this within, for this size roll, within, in about an hour or an hour and a half in 425. It'll come out great if you have a short amount of time. If you have a longer day that you want to put in the crock pot, it works just as well that way. Slow cooking a chuck roast will make it really great, but you can also use an Instant Pot if you need to as well. So that's what's so versatile about this roast. Whatever container you can put it in, it's going to work that way for you. Okay, so... The other thing we're going to do now is we are going to add our meat in here. Since I cut these into smaller pieces, I'm only going to put it in for an hour to check before I see if it's really going to look like it's going to be done. Now, and then what you want to do is add about 8 to 10 of these peppers. This is also going to give great flavor, but I'm wanting to remind you it's not going to be hot like you think. It's not going to be what you think. So if you're worried about hot peppers, which I absolutely love this, so I know I'm going to love it, but my daughter, I'm not going to tell her about this because she would freak out until she tastes the roast and then she'll find out. So we've got about eight to ten of those in here now. They're going to flavor the roast as well. And then the piece de resistance is we want a half a cube of butter to go right on top. Okay, we're going to add our lid, put it in our preheated oven at 425, and we're going to check it in about an hour. Okay, you can see this, we have a really beautiful gravy and meat in here that's kind of falling apart a little bit. So I'm going to take the meat out right here. Now we want to maybe separate a little bit of the fat from the meat. And take that out and put it somewhere else over here. And we can, this is how you actually shred it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely shredded. You can shred it yourself on your plate. But you want to see how, make sure that it's nice and tender as you shred it. I'm going to take out some of these peppers to put around the edge. Uh, one nice thing is you won't be, if you eat some of these peppers with your roast, you don't need to worry that it will be too hot because this has been very toned down in the inside of here. And let's take a look. Shred this up a little bit more. Gravy is amazing. We're going to go ahead and just put it right on top of this meat. And let me show you how you're going to serve that right on top. Now these onions are all completely broken apart. It has the garlic and all those wonderful seasonings. There you go. And let, I'll show you in a moment how it looks with your potatoes as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add this meat, this nicely tender shredded meat with the gravy. And then I'm going to add a little bit more gravy from over here that has all the onion and garlic in it. And as my side dish today, I'm going to put on some of my amazing roasted 
carrots. Here we have our mashed potatoes and it's so easy just to add this wonderful gravy and pot roast right on top with a little bit more gravy sauce. It's perfectly thickened and seasoned perfectly. Let's try it and see how it is. And, oh my goodness, oh. Mmm, mmm. Okay, not too salty. Absolutely amazing. If you like this video and like what you learned today about how to make wonderful, amazing pot roast, go to my channel. And to go with this roast, we made my creamed corn recipe. I'm making a big dinner for my daughter's birthday. Creamed corn and my um, brown sugar roasted carrots were a huge hit as well. And of course, my, uh, my green salad with um, poppy seed dressing is amazing too. So try all of those to go with your meal and share this with some of your friends. And uh, hope you'll see you back one again. And don't forget to su subscribe and push the notification bell so that you'll know when my next video comes out. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate all of you.